M0FXB, welcome to my channel. Let's download the programming software for the Bofeng DM1701 DMR radio. So you just go to this page, then scroll down, it says DM1701. You get this window. Software, you have got the manual here as well, and programming guide. Click DM1701, you get the zip file. Double click your zip file. Move that over, double click that, and then you've got CPS. There may be newer versions, but this will be good for demonstration. You've also got the, the USB driver, so you may as well double click that and run that. We're gonna click the 64XE one. Just going yes, yes, yes to everything. So that will be your USB driver for your cable. It's a twin pin cable. Then go back and we're gonna to go to the CPS this time double click and CPS. Oh, there's even firmware there as well. We're probably going to end up using the OpenGD77 anyway. Click programming software. So this will be just the software for the normal version, not the OpenGD77. We'll do that in a completely separate video. Okay, with a bit of luck, we've got our software now. Just click the window squares at the bottom and you'll see DM1701 version. Now we're in the code plug, double click basic information. Uh, now I haven't got the radio yet so I'm just practicing so at the, at the moment you're just seeing the frequencies look. Go down to general setting. In this setting, on the right hand side here, add your DMR number. It will say 1234 at the moment, but radio ID is your DMR number. You do need that to transmit and receive on DMR. And put your call sign above it as well, your ham radio call sign. Everything else I haven't changed. I'll leave all the windows open. So the next one is menu item here. And you can move these menus around if you want to. The only thing I ticked was program radio here. Everything else I left as it was. You've got a menu hang time. So when you press menu, how long that it's on screen. Then going down to the next tab is button definitions. So you're deciding what you want the buttons to do. And you've got short press, long press. So if you drop down, say, side button one, you've got the same list for every button. And you choose short press, long press. And you've got the ones that are marked P1 and P2 as well don't really use the ones below but you can actually program the key the keypad numbers to do you know, selections as well going down don't really change text message or privacy what you will do is go to zone see here where it says zone on the left I've added one called hotspot so how did I do that well yours will be called zone one probably double click it and then rename it so let's call it um, repeaters you, a zone is it holds all the talk groups, all the channels. They don't have to be talk groups. They can be analog channels for contacting your repeater. So they can just be ordinary channels. So you don't have to use the word talk groups. And then you do have to add. If there's nothing in there at all, then it won't save. So you, whatever's listed here, click add. Yours might say channel one, but click add. So you see that you select them and then click add. And they're in the channels A and B now. And then when you go to, let's have a look now, to my hotspots there. That can be a zone that you can add things into now. But you do need to create channels. So we'll go to channel information here. We've only created one channel. To create a new channel, you can right click just here. Right click, let's do that again. Add, you just added a channel, it automatically calls it channel one same goes for zones you can right click hover over just do that add I've just added another zone and you double click it it brings down the list it's quite confusing but you know you're basically adding zones zones are like buckets of channels talk groups channels are the channels so let's choose a new channel so I'll quickly show you my hotspot one because I've already done that so for my hotspot I put in I gave it a name of hotspot, the frequency of my hotspot. I selected digital. 
the timeout, I've changed that to a higher, so higher, so it doesn't, you know, basically stop transmitting when you're talking. And you can select the power as well. Leave it on middle for now. Now we do need to add what they call a contact. See, it's a contact name. Now I've created a couple already. Contacts are the talk group that when you transmit, when you TX, that's where you're going to be heard. So it's really important. And you have to either import a, lots of contacts or create, you know, create it yourself. So up here in the little green man on the left, see the green man, digital contact. That's basically talk groups, um, private and groups. So private means it goes to an individual group means you go into a talk group. So I've created a few here. Let's add another one. So talk group 91, very busy. That's called worldwide. Talk group nine is like having a wire between your radio and the hotspot, but it doesn't actually, it's not a talk group. It's just a connection. Uh, and then you can manually dial numbers on your radio to connect to talk groups. So let's add a popular one, which is 2350. So here we just call it, that one's actually called chat one. Actually it's called chat that one. And we're gonna call it, it's definitely group. You get to select look, group private. I don't use the other one. That's that's a talk group. Private will be an individual, so no one else would hear you. And then the really important thing is you want your number two three five zero. So that's talk group number two three five zero, and you've done that. I'm going to click add to the next one. Another one is chat two, chat. So the name actually isn't the most important important thing. It's actually the number. Two, three, five, two, and so on, and click add. So you get the idea. You're creating talk groups that, when you transmit, people are going to hear you on, uh, and you may, you know, you may have your favourite talk group. Because DMR is like lots of phone numbers. You've got your phone number, which is your DMR number. You've got talk group numbers. You've got individual numbers. See the way it works? It's, it's, that's why it's like a, it's like a, it's like almost like a commercial system. So once you've done that, let's go to say repeater. We now know that the channel called hotspot has already been programmed. Let's do another channel. So if we go to channel one, which hasn't been programmed yet, it's there. Let's call it repeater. Uh, let's call it GB3WR. That's my local repeater and analog, yeah? Not digital. We'll go 145.600. And then the input, when you transmit, there's, we don't put a shift, we just put in the transmit frequency, which is 145000, okay? So when you key the mic, that's where it transmits. When you're listening, it's 145000. Time out, we want to change that again, make it a bit higher so we don't run out when we're chatting. Power, you decide there. And then all you need to set when you're in analog is your CTCSS. So just set 94.8 for GB3WR. And that's it, you've created that channel. We can close these windows. So if we close quite a few and then to keep it nice and simple, we double click repeater. Now we haven't added GB3WR into our list of channels. If you look here, it says channel member, hotspot, hotspot. Now if we click the available, on the left you have available channels, ones that you've just made. Click add, it adds it to your list. So you've got the A band, the B band. We've got two channels in the repeater zone. If you go to my hotspot zone, we've only got one in there. Oh, it looks like we did add the, no, we, it allows us now, if we want to add GB3WR. And we could create another zone. So underneath here, zone two, we could call that, if we double click, we could call that simplex. Simplex channels, you know, simplex analog, okay? Like so, we've created the zone. We need to get some channels in there. We need to, oh, it didn't create it because I forgot to add something to it. So let's go, oh no, it has created, there it is there. Simplex, that's fine. It's automatically got a couple of channels in there. So to create a simplex channel, you go back to channels, add a channel, so you right click, add. That's gonna allow you to add a channel, double click analog let's call it uh, s20 which is i believe 145.500 that's a simplex so the 
the TX frequency is the same. You choose the power and the timeout. You can copy and paste actually if you want, don't want to keep doing that. That's simple, it's S20. So it's there, but we need if we want to find it when we turn the radio on, we need to put it in a zone. So we've created a zone called Simplex. So we double click Simplex. Click S20, add. And on the B band, if you want, it's up to you. You don't have to, you can put anything in, in the B band. I've added S20. So now when, you, when you're on the radio and you're turning and cycling up and down or turning the knob through the zones, when you get to Simplex, inside that Simplex, you're gonna have the channels you have put in there. So it's quite a lot to get your head around, but let's just go back and look at uh, the DMR settings because the channel for DMR, you do also need to select a color code. Now I tend to do color code one, slot two. Imagine the channel is cut in half when you see slot one and slot two, and you can use one half for voice, you know, talking, and the other half for sending digital and vice versa. So that's actually not, you know, the channel isn't cut in half, but that's how I visualize slots. Color codes are the digital way of doing CTCSS. So a lot of repeaters use three. But, you know, many, many different ones use different ones. But the common one is color code one and slot two on hotspots and color code three. And you can uh, use slot one if you want to go in the other half of the channel and, and disconnect and things like that. So these are the things you need to learn is the frequency the contact contact name you have to select so that we when we when this one transmits if I want to just say transmit on worldwide which is the contact that we created here worldwide so when I key the mic it will transmit on worldwide talk group 91 using color code 1 and repeat slot 2 and it will use these frequencies when I key the mic if you don't get the frequency right your hotspot won't pick it up and that's it. And then when you're ready, you just send it to the radio. Just click right up here. And you can actually say, I can save everything that I've done somewhere. DM1701. Let's just save that. Save. And you can bring, import that as well. Open it. You've got more settings here. Okay. So the best thing is just to play around, tinker around with this, this kind of software until you get it. But keep saying to yourself, it's frequency, you know, talk group, which is contact, color code, CTCSS, repeater slot, which half of the channel you want to use. You have to create or add a contact, which is of the talk groups. Okay, the zones are groups of channels. They're, they're, they're like buckets. Channels are the channels. You've got different things there for DTMF, but that's more advanced. And VFO is just so you, you can type in on VFO, VFO A, VFO B at the bottom here. See so yeah, it? When the radio just turns on, it's in VFO mode. I would like to listen to my my um, hubnet node, so I put in 434.550 analog. I need a tone on that of 77. Let's have a look. Yeah, that's about right. Power only needs to be low and time out if I talk again. You can, so I'm pretty sure you copy and paste. Copy and then when you go add, yeah, look, you can copy and paste that. That, that makes it a bit quicker. But anyway, back to my uh, VFO mode. Um, just being confusing. So there you are, 77 tone on analog. That's VFO A. And on B, I'd put my hotspot. So I would go digital. Put my hotspot. So when I'm in VFO mode, so look now, yeah, four three one five five zero, and it's just clicked it across, and I want it on worldwide because that's where I tend to sit. Color code one, slot two, and yeah, worldwide, and that means that when the radio, I can save that to the file that I just saved to by clicking save here. Read and write is the same as these two little windows here. Let's click one of these, DTMF signaling. That's for a separate video, but you can preset your DTMF. Hopefully you can just use the keypad. With the OpenGD77 you can. 
zones. Yeah, it's just, pretty much this list here is, is what you're seeing on the left here. Thanks for watching my channel. I hope this helps. It's, uh, just keep practicing and you'll get it. 7-3.